Chapter 3. Hear this word that the Lord hath spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore I will punish you for all your iniquities. Can two walk together except they be agreed? Will a lion roar in the forest when he hath no prey? Will a young lion cry out of his den if he have taken nothing? Now what's being said right here is actually quite terrifying. The young lion is not a whelp. But when able to provide for itself, he growls over the prey which he has in his lair. So Israel lies helpless as the words of God's threatening strike upon him. And these questions continue, and this so reminds me of Christ and his questioning and his parables. Can a bird fall in a snare upon the earth where no gin or net is for him? Shall one take up a snare from the earth and have taken nothing at all? Shall a trumpet be blown in the city, and the people not be afraid? Shall there be evil in a city, and the Lord hath not done it? Meaning calamity. Shall calamity not come upon you, and the Lord, at the very least, not allowed it to happen, like in the book of Job? But first, let's go over this. Can a bird fall in a snare upon the earth where no gin is for him? And the main point of these is it's a certainty. If someone blows a trumpet in the city, everyone is terrified because they know what that means. And if a bird comes up, it's a certainty that it's going to be caught within the trap and the snare. Such is the certainty of these judgments to come upon the nations, unto which they did. Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. Meaning, everything that the Lord is going to do, he's going to forewarn you all about. You're going to be warned before it happens. He'll do nothing that he's not going to already tell you. The lion hath roared, who will not fear? The Lord God hath spoken, who can but prophesy? Publish in the palaces of Ashdod, down below with the Philistines, and in the land of Egypt, and say, Assemble yourselves upon the mountains of Samaria, and behold, the great tumults in the midst thereof, and the oppressed in the midst thereof. Let even the heathen know about the fall of the northern tribes. For they know not to do right, saith the Lord, who store up violence and robbery in their palaces. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, an adversary, there shall be even round about the land, and he shall bring down thy strength from thee, and thy palaces shall be spoiled. Notice this. This is so, just talking about how evil that the people have become, for they know not to do right, who store up violence and robbery. Meaning, not merely have lost the perception of what is and what is not right, but are indifferent to such distinctions. They know not and care not the awful state of utter moral impotence. Nothing is more condemnatory than this brief sentence. The light within them is darkness. Thus saith the Lord, as the shepherd taketh out of the mouth of the lion two legs or a piece of an ear, so shall the children of Israel be taken out that dwell in Samaria in the corner of a bed and in Damascus in a couch. This is speaking of just a tiny remnant of the people who are going to be saved. Hear ye and testify in the house of Jacob, saith the Lord God, the God of hosts, that in that day that I shall visit the transgressions of Israel upon him, that I will also visit the altars of Bethel where the calves were set up, and the horns of the altar shall be cut off and fall to the ground. Remember, they had these two calf altars. This was their main temple in the northern kingdom. One was at Bethel, another was at Dan. And those things stood for hundreds of years, just a complete abomination before God. And I will smite the winter house with the summer house, and the houses of ivory shall perish, and the great houses shall have an end, saith the Lord. Now, mainly rebuking the luxurious people, uh, all the luxuries of the rich whom oppress the poor. They'd go and worship these calves. And he's saying, I'm going to destroy your calves. I'm going to destroy your temple. I'm going to destroy your houses, everything. But this is an appropriate point to bring back up the earthquake that's mentioned two years before. I will smite, the Lord says, all these things. By the greatness of the desolation, it shall appear that God did smite, though by the Assyrian, through the Assyrian army. Or perhaps it may refer to the earthquake, foretold two years before it came, as whole cities were destroyed, and no doubt these houses. 